So I'll go yesterday and get my squat rack, uh, get my weights, and I go to lo the, the local beach. And I unpack everything, and I basically spend an hour and a half at the beach training, uh, squatting. Uh, I did seven sets of five at 170. So that's around 80% of my one rep max, and I did it, did it for seven sets of five. And I developed a headache at the end of that session, and the headache got worse throughout the night. I drank, man, I drank a stupid amount of water. Like after the workout, I probably drank three to four liters of water. Throughout the workout, I drank three liters. This morning, I've, I've gone through another two liters, uh, and now it's just before one o'clock in the afternoon, and my headache is still thumping, kind of occiput type of headache at the back of the head. Um, so six days ago, I got that Pfizer dose uh, booster and I kind of developed headaches there. Went away somewhat and then yesterday came back with the vengeance. I think it's purely dehydration, um, which is, you know, it's, it's my fault, my conditioning. It's all on me, really. Uh, but it got me thinking. And you, you guys know how my brain works. And um, I always kind of like to compare uh, compare myself and, and, and the kind of, you know, the human condition as a whole. Uh, imagine what sort of tough people existed and still exist in this world. 35 degree heat and I spent an hour and a half training, squatting, and I developed this, right, headache, dehydration. I don't even know what type of toughness, I don't even know what type of human being can do this day in, day out. Um, if you just look at the history, man, there was no sick days <laughs> if it's 30 degrees. You go to that field and you plow that field, man. Think about the slave trade. Think about what those poor souls had to do, what they had to endure. Um, think about all, the, all the, the mines in Africa, you know, all, all those things that have happened in history where people have literally done what I did times 10 on a daily basis for years on end. What sort of tough people are we talking about, man? It's just, that's, kind of, that's how my brain works, man. So I put myself through something and I think it's tough and my body kind of is shocked to it. Um, and I spoke yesterday about dehydration and how wind uh, mixed with heat um, seems to dehydrate you 10 times quicker. No matter how much water I was drinking, I just could not catch up. My fluids just kept leaving me. Um, I probably should have had electrolytes and we can talk science and we can talk all these fancy stuff, freaking IVT infusions. We can do all these sorts of things, but I, I can't get away from the fact that there were people in our history that did this for a very, very long time. Uh, did they have electrolytes, Powerade, Gatorade, you know, powder this, powder that, tablet this, tablet that, blood work after this, you know, uh, now, some of you guys are going to say, but, you know, they're not doing 80% of the one rep max for five, seven sets of five. They're not, but I'm not doing it for 10 hours a day, every day. And I would argue that what they were doing, you know, trying to knock, knock rock apart with a pickaxe, uh, plowing the fields, that work is 100 times harder than what I went through yesterday. Uh, it's just, these are the type of things that kind of I think about and motivate me to push harder. Uh, I basically say to myself, that's fine. There's nothing, nothing to complain about. This is just a weakness. Um, my body hasn't been through this type of condition before. Uh, you know, I've worked out, I said before, 40 degrees, 45 degree temperatures in, in a garage and sheds that I've kind of lived in and trained in, you know, over the years. Um, but I've never had to deal with wind. Uh, wind really caught me off, off guard. Um, I don't know what it was. I mean, yesterday I woke up and I, had a decent meal and I drank a whole bunch of water. One of you fellas said, you know, you believe in prehydration, you know, you know, drinking a whole bunch of fluids slowly uh, leading up to an event. So you kind of, you're starting off really hydrated um, because once, the, once you're in that condition, once you're in that heat, once you're working out, it's really hard to catch up. Really, really hard to catch up. Uh, but my, my brain just, you know, reverted straight back to history. You know, some of you guys have asked me, you know, what books did you read or, you know, what's your exposure? How did you get this mentality that you have? It's just life experiences, man. It's just life experiences. And, you know, my go-to uh, my go-to kind of uh, thing to do uh, when I'm kind of feeling down or when I feel sorry for myself or, you know, when I feel like things are not going my way, 
uh, whatever whatever the case might be. I like to refer to history. Uh, you know, I you know, you know, I grew up, fled civil war, came to Australia. I work in emergency, so I see I've seen a fair bit of things, um, but that's a decimal point compared to what's happening in the world right now. Um, and even though you might go through hell and back and whatever, you know, you might have like a really difficult history. Our brain tends to forget some of these things. And so when you watch history, when you watch certain things, when you watch how people are living and, and, and the plight they're dealing with and the struggles they're dealing with, it kind of makes you zoom out and makes you realize what really you're dealing with. You know, there's a scale associated with your troubles. Not to say that your trouble doesn't matter. Everyone's trouble is, is kind of uh, relative, right, on, on this scale. But I think it, it, it serves a purpose to think about, you know, the conditions of World War One, World War Two, uh, the slave trade, all these things that I'm kind of thinking about now. And don't get me wrong, man, like I'm not some historian expert. I can't recite all the battles of World War One and World War Two. I'm not that. I just like to kind of go into that type of thinking and, and, and look at certain things. You know, I don't have a lot of time now to read anymore. I used to read a whole bunch back in the day. But now, ever since I started squatting every day and ever since, I guess, kids, um, there seems to be, I don't know, like a lack of, I don't know, will maybe and a lack of mood to sit down and read. Um, I do prefer documentaries. Uh, and recently, actually, uh, we watched, well, my wife and I, we watched that movie called 1917, I think it was called. Um, story of a, of a fella, or a couple of fellas who um, basically had to take this message from a general all the way to another front. Um, and call off this certain wave of attack. Um, and, and apparently, you know, reading the reviews, it was apparently quite accurate, historically accurate. Um, and, you know, it was, it was really interesting to see you know, the trenches and, you know, how, how you know, the Germans built their trenches, how the West built their trenches um, and the conditions. You know, we have to remember the, this went on for years and what type of conditions, you know, people lived under. And then, you know, the guy blows his whistle Everyone jumps out of the trenches and, 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 and attacks, you know, charges the enemy. And then on the other side, there's a machine gunner just mowing people down. I think about the thoughts of those poor men, you know, the fear, the adrenaline. You know, you're running into certain death. You are running into certain death. How many blokes made it to the other side over no man's land? How many blokes made it? And there, there, is, there is a sea of men. Before that whistle is blown, blown, there's a sea of men looking at each other, scared shitless, you know, and you have to climb out of that freaking hole and run. There's barbed wire, there's dead carcasses everywhere, horses, there's, there's bodies everywhere, there's disease everywhere, it's wet, and people are running and, and bullets are flying. You know, I think about those type of experiences, think about those type of conditions, and then I think about what I went through yesterday. I'm, gonna, I'm embarrassed to have even, I'm even talking about it in this video. You know, sure, it's hard. But come on, man. Come on. What are we talking about? I think, I think we as a people, especially us in the, in the, in the, in the first world, I guess in the West, you know. Uh, man, we are getting weak, man. We are getting freaking weak. We are making strides intellectually, you know, we are making strides, you know, technologically, uh, but man, we are going in reverse at lightning speed when it comes to physically. We are decaying physically as a species. When I read stats like half of America is obese, not just overweight, obese. Half of Australia, I think last time I looked is overweight or probably even obese as well. Now, what is that other than the function of technology, comfort, weakness? It's almost like there's a, there's, there's a slider and there's opposite scales and you slide that slider. You want to be really comfortable or you want to be uncomfortable? On the uncomfortable side, you have somebody that has a proper freaking shape and proper strength. On the other side, you have somebody who's super comfortable and downing 1,000 freaking times 10 kilojoules. Uh, of energy and just sitting on their ass in the office. You know, I remember my dad telling me uh, when I was, you know, I wanted to be a mechanic when I was growing up. You have to understand, I, I grew up in that Fast and the Furious era. I loved cars. My brother loved cars. So I kind of grew up thinking about cars, doing up cars. 
painting them, you know, doing all this sort of stuff. That's kind of my, my first thought. That's what I wanted to do. My dad said, you ain't doing that, man. You ain't spending a, a lifetime bent over an engine bay. You're not doing it. My dad spent a whole bunch of time working with cars as a youngster. Uh, my dad is one of those people that's kind of like an all-rounder, man. He's, he's done all sorts of things from building sites to cars to, you know, to, to farm work. He's done everything, man. And so he had a, a really good kind of experience and he said, you're not, you're not snapping your spine. I didn't bring you to this country so you can snap your spine. If you want to snap your spine, you can go back where we came from. So he wanted me to get an education. He wanted me to work with a pen in an air-conditioned room. And so I did. I uh, picked nursing, followed my mom's footsteps. And I'm glad I did that. It was a really good thing to do. But it's not, it's not a passion of mine, you know what I mean? Like, I still love cars. I still think, you know, I would, I would have loved to work with cars. Not to say that nursing is, is, is bad. Definitely, nursing made me as a man, made me into a man I am today. Um, but later on, I realized that people in the office have a shorter lifespan than people actually working in trades. I couldn't believe that. So the people that are working harder physically are living longer than the people in the offices. So my dad wanted me to have a more comfortable life, but not knowing that he's leading me into a shorter life. It's anti-intuitive to think it that way, but man, this life is about discomfort. That's what we need. One of you fellas actually said yesterday, I think it was Steve. Steve is somebody who watches the channel quite often. He left a, a nice post uh, referring to a, to a uh, a study, um, uh, it was a long, it was a big study. It was a, it was, a, it was looking at a whole bunch of different uh, studies. It was summarizing. I think it was like twenty six thousand uh, 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 patients, not patients, people. Uh, and it basically summarized the more steps taken, the longer the life is. So they were looking at steps per day taken, and people that are taking two thousand steps per day or less had. Uh, a shorter lifespan than people who were taking 14,000 steps per day. And it seemed to be like if you're taking more, I'm going to butcher this, if you're taking more than 6,000, 7,000 steps per day, you are 66% uh, more likely to live a longer life. Uh, so, that, you know, a lot goes into that, obviously. One of the other comments on that post was, um, did, we, did they control for other factors? You know, so sick people, generally sick people don't like to walk, right? If you're bedridden, you don't walk. So if we can control for sick people who have kind of been sick from get-go um, and, and things of that nature, but I think we can all agree on that movement is medicine, right? Movement is medicine. A person that sits on their ass 24-7 is not going to be healthier than somebody that's plowing the fields. As, as weird as that freaking sounds, you think that poor guy who's snapping his spine with that pickaxe on 40 degree temperature hitting a damn rock um, is going to have a, a shorter lifespan. It seems to be that trades, maybe not such extreme trades where you're like a freaking slave, you know, because, you know, you have to think about nutrition, hydration, all that sort of stuff. Um, but barring the extreme, extreme ends of, of physical labor, I think you are going to live longer. Uh, and it's something that kind of I always think about. Every time I sit down to enjoy something, um, I always think to myself, okay, did I do something today to move one step further in the direction that I want to go? Um, and I think about this is this is one of my, my like one of the frequent things that I think about. And this is where squat every day kind of really made sense to me. Um, no, I don't have to do a pig squat every day, but I can certainly do something every single day. And you know, in my experience, doing something's better than doing nothing. And you know, we can get into the arguments about periodization and programming and whatnot. Um, but to me, it's multifaceted. It's not just the physical. It's the mental. It's the emotional. You, we all know you feel better when you, after you've gone for a run. It's undeniable. You might be the most depressed piece of shit on that day. You might be, you know, really, really down on yourself. You go for a run, I guarantee you, man. Or you go, you go through a pick, pick squat routine, I guarantee you. At the end of that, you're going to feel a lot better about yourself. Our body re re rewards us, rewards us for these physical endeavors. You know, it's, we're wired that way. We are not good being stationary. We need to move. When we stop, we start to die, decay. That's what happens in biological organisms. You have to go. You have to move. Um, yesterday was tough for me. Yesterday was, was bad conditions, but it's nothing like, like people in our history as a species have put up with. Um, man, just think, just think about it. So yesterday, the, the, the basketball court that I was squatting at, there was a bit of shade. And so there was a bit of kind of respite from the sun. It wasn't direct sunlight. 
But man, I couldn't imagine being in direct sunlight those whole two hours at 35, 37 degrees, whatever it was, and squatting, and it's windy. That would have, that, man, my headache would be, I would have been dry as a chip at the end of that. Um, and the weird thing about hydration is you can't just down water, you know? <laughs> You know, you can't just down water. Uh, you know, I did. You know, water is a really good start, but there needs to be electrolytes. There need to be there needs to be salts, right? Uh, if you know anything about medicine and 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 and, and you know equilibrium and balance and, and, and all of that, uh, there's fine balances of all these different salts in our body, all these different electrolytes in our body. Um, sweat, you lose a bit of salt. You lose a bit. I think you lose potassium. Definitely lose sodium. Um, so just down in water, you're just going to further dilute your blood. Um, you need to kind of also, I guess, eat salt and consume other things. Um, anyway, my mind's kind of running from, from a clinical sense. Uh, last time it was another very, very incredible uh, thing to see. Patreon list is growing daily. There's some more people on the list. I want to take the time to read their names out. Uh, this time around, I actually wrote the names on a piece of paper because this damn app just keeps blocking me, so it's, it's useless. Uh, so, Dale Charles, Shaq Khan, Carl Hinson, Marco uh, Cepetic, Steven uh, Stetzler, Marcos Marquin, Jesse Galloway, Eric Wiseman. Um, fellas, I keep saying it every day, but I want to take this opportunity to thank you guys individually for taking the time, um, for sending that positive energy to me for making my life and my journey that little bit easier. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, it's just an incredible to, to, to think to, to wake up every single day and see the army of people, the army of, of guys supporting this journey. It's, it's really, it's a blessing. I appreciate every single one of you guys. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.